Greetings and praise the Lord. This is Reverend Professor Arnum. It is another Sunday again, and we are coming with the Word of God. We are still continuing our series on Ecclesiastes. Today we want to talk about sources. We want to talk about sources. When we were young, the word sources was normally used to refer to cards that were given by friends and relatives when we were preparing for exams just to wish us success in our exams, to come out with flying colors. Normally the word says, I wish you all the best and come out, come out with flying colors in this your examinations. So when we talk about success, it's about attainment, accomplishments in a particular endeavor, be it in our young days, we talk about when you go and sit and exams and you pass and you pass very well, it is success for you as a young person. It is not necessarily a destination because when you pass your exams, it does not necessarily mean that you are going to go to the next step. Examination just is it's not a destination. It doesn't lead you to where you're going to go to, but it helps you to gain competence, skills, have enough resources that would enable you to thrive. But success can be short-lived. There were people who, when we were in high school, were very brilliant. And we thought they could go up to, second, uh, uh, to, to universities and be engineers and doctors. But sometimes you go and meet some of them as people who are actually unemployed. For instance, in the US in 1923, a small group of the world's wealthiest men who were been to be successful met at Edgewater Beach Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. At the time, these men controlled more money than the total amount contained in the United States Treasury. Of seven men who were present at the meeting, two died broke, two died shortly after being released from prison and three committed suicide. So clearly, it shows that mere accomplishments, mere attainments are not really to be deemed as really successful. So clearly, we want to see, say that there is a, a right approach to success in life. We want to see what Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 tells us about the right approach to success in life. And I read Ecclesiastes 9, 1 to 6. This too, I carefully exploit. Even though the actions of godly and wise people are in God's hands, no one knows whether God will show them favor. The same destiny ultimately awaits everyone, whether righteous or wicked, good or bad, ceremonially clean or unclean, religious or irreligious, good people receive the same treatments as sinners. And people who make promises to God are treated like people who don't. It seems so wrong that everyone under the sun suffers the same fate. Already twisted by evil, people choose their own mad course, for they have no hope. There is nothing ahead but death anyway. There is hope only for the living. As they say, it is better to be a, a live dog than a dead lion. The living at least know they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, nor are they remembered. Whatever they did in their lifetime, be it loving, hating, envying, is all long gone. They no longer play a part in anything here on earth. That is Solomon talking. And I have picked three realities that we should watch when it comes to our approach to success and life in general. Three realities we have to watch when it comes to our approach to success and life in general. The first reality from this text that we have read is that the sovereign hand of God is very important. The sovereign hand of God on us is very important. Ecclesiastes 9 1 says, This too I carefully explored, even though the actions of godly and wise people are in God's hands, no one knows whether God will show 
them favor. The reality is that God is sovereign. No one knows whether love or hate awaits him. It is God who decides. All these are in the hands of God. There is no guarantee of economic prosperity, physical health, freedom from pain or popularity for anyone, be it the one who thinks that he is godly or the one who thinks he is ungodly. But we can know one thing beyond a doubt. A caring God is in control and nothing takes place apart from his sovereign control. God is in control of every circumstance in your life. So the reality is that it's God who actually determines what happens to us. Sometimes people think it's Satan. It is not Satan. If God has not allowed any calamity to come on you, it will never come on you. Satan can plan it. But God will make sure it doesn't happen. If God wants it to happen, it will surely happen. God is sovereign. And you cannot, you cannot actually change God's mind, change God's uh, control. You cannot control God. It's God who controls you. This is a reality that gives our lives definition and meaning. Our life gets meaning when we know that the sovereign Lord is in control. Reality number two, the absolute certainty of death. The absolute certainty of death. Ecclesiastes 9, 2 to 3 says, the same destiny ultimately awaits everyone. And Ecclesiastes 3 says, there is nothing ahead but death anyway. Death awaits all of us. Whether you are clean or unclean, religious or irreligious, death would, is awaiting you, as Ecclesiastes 9, 2 says. And he says in Ecclesiastes 3 that everybody under the sun suffers the same fate. Whether you are twi a twisted person or you are a straight person, you cannot avoid death. Death is unavoidable to all of us as humans. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, it is a destiny. Death is an appointment that all of us have and none of us can cancel that appointment. We should live our entire lives with the knowledge that we are headed for a better place. And every minute and every decision of every day should be lived with the, that knowledge that we are on a journey. This world, we can only live for a short time. But we should live as if we are living here so that we will go somewhere else. Hallelujah. Did you ever think when the hairs rose, you see a hairs passing, the hairs that carries the dead body passing, that you could be the next to die and be in that hearse? Reality number three, there is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Ecclesiastes 9, 4 says, there is hope only for the living. As the popular saying goes, it is better to be a live dog than a dead lion. Despite the fact that every human being is ultimately subject to the same inscrutable distribution of adversity and prosperity, and despite the fact that we are all going to join one another in death. Solomon tells us that we shouldn't despair of life. We should not give up on life. We should thank God rather that we are alive. We shouldn't wish death for ourselves, irrespective of the circumstance. Nobody should contribute suicide because of disappointment that he has, is facing or a very bad circumstance or a tragedy that has been befallen him or her. Don't give up. There is more to life than even the, the, the bad circumstances around you. Life is better than death. So don't ever wish for death because life has so many things to give us. Life has so many advantages over death. Even a live dog, as we are saying, is better than a dead lion. It's better to be a live dog through all these sufferings than to be a dead lion. Solomon is saying it is better to be alive and dishonored rather than honored and dead. 
Don't die for people to honor your dead body. It is better to be here and let people even say things about you. Let people even try to oppress you. Let people even try to undermine you. All that is a passing phase of your life. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. It is good to experience the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because the bad which you are going through, this too will pass. Because you are not the only one that is going through it. Many people have gone through these things and it has passed. So this is the third one. And I want to encourage you. I want to tell you that in this life, these realities are very important. These realities are very important. The sovereignty of God, God being in control. Just say God is in control. Leave it in the hands of God. Things will surely work out. And also know that whatever you have, whether you have the whole world, death will catch up with you. So you have to think about the life after death and not this life only. The way you live your life today and the decisions you take today are going to actually determine your eternal life in future. Your decision for Christ, your values and your virtues will definitely determine. And there is hope. Don't live in hopelessness. There is hope. I tell you, when you live a life that is surrounded unto God and unto Christ, you would have some hope even when everything seems to be going bad. There is life at the end of the time. May God bless you and may God replenish your strength, rekindle the fire in you, give you resilience and look forward to a better future irrespective of the circumstances. Because God is in control. Thank you so much for listening to me. This has been Reverend Professor Anu talking to you about sources. Sources comes from hard work. And that sources that comes from hard work can go through pain. Because God is sovereign and he can determine when, what and how. Sources comes to you knowing that at the end of the tunnel, you will surely die. So success is not the end of life. It is just part of our passing through this journey. And when you are looking out for success and failures come, don't give up because there's hope at the end of the tunnel. Success is distributed across board as pain is distributed across board. So yours is on the way. Receive it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This has been Reverend Professor Anu coming your way with the Word of God this Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Tune in again on my Facebook, my YouTube, and my Instagram at 7.30 a.m. every Sunday for the Word of God. Be encouraged and shalom.